Hey everyone, this is Manly Bass Zero, and welcome back to Spirit Hunter NG. Previously, we defeated the Tsukiyomi, and now all that's left is seemingly the Kakia. We are living our lives finally! But I have so much information! After noon, I go to the hospital to calm me up. The doctor explains the results to me, but. Is Kakia in Ami? Oh god. Is that why we haven't seen her? Despite clearly being in a weakened state, her brain infrequently exhibits Fado waves. Obviously, I don't understand any of that, because I'm just a punch person. After I promise to bring her in for regular exams, the doctor finally releases her. Then after paying out not to be a quick visit, it somehow already becomes sunset. When we arrive at Kisoji, Ami badges me into a huge shopping trip at the nearby supermarket. We stock up not only on food and candy, but also a change of clothes and toothbrush for Ami. She was like, like I want to play with Oni-chan. I'm gonna be the Emoto. So maybe this is all a twist. What a twist. I don't have much to say since she'll be <laughs> Sorry, I'm still thinking that. Uh, with me for a while, and by the end of my arms are full. Um, Oni-chan. I've had Chikake on a twist! Okay. So, I'm sorry. Want me, to help, want me to help carry a grocery bag? I'm dying. I'm not sure why. No, I got it. Then I can take that paper bag. It looks pretty light. She's staring at the black paper bag I have. And Bernie Oi, Oi left it at the hospital this morning when she went to visit Ami. It contains everything that ought not to be had on her when she collapsed. Uh-oh. The police had it submitted as evidence, but they'd finished examining it all. According to Oi, she put the report in there too as a little gift to me. I told you I've got it, Ami. You gotta save your strength to get better. Yeah, okay. I'll let you handle it, thanks. Maybe there's something important in that bag. Kakia wants it. Ami and I walk side by side as we head to my apartment. We did the exact same thing just three weeks ago. It feels like it's been an eternity since then. Oh yeah, Oni-chan. Whatever happened to that black postcard? Oh, that. <laughs> the black postcard I got from Kakia. The cursed invitation that got Ami and I wrapped up in Kakia's games. If I hadn't picked up that postcard back then, would my fate have changed? I don't really remember. To be honest, that postcard just vanished at some point. Maybe I ended up getting tossed with the rest of my junk mail. Oh. That's too bad. They had a fun riddle. We rest for a bit after getting home, and I make a stir fry at Ami's request. It's not like it's especially fancy or anything, but Ami looks delighted as she eats it. After taking a little break, Ami says that she'll wash the dishes. Not that I remember. It was always Ami's job to do the dishes on days when I made the food. But she's still recovering, so I try to keep her from more exerting herself. But she just yells, it's my job, and won't listen to a thing I say. In the end, I throw in a, the towel and let her do it. I hear Ami start to sing in the kitchen. She's having a good time washing the plates. She seems weirdly excited. I guess that's better than her being all depressed over not nods me. Alright. What should I do in the meantime? Da, 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 na, na. Let's look at the bag. There's a paper bag on my bed. It's got all Natsumi's clothes and purse inside. Alright. The cops analyze them. Ami said Oi include the report. Should I read it? Have a look. As I'm looking for the bag, I immediately find a manila envelope. Inside are a number of official looking documents. The letters are so small that looking at them makes my head hurt. But I start to read it anyway. It has detailed descriptions and analysis on not Natsumi's personal belongings and clothes. There's some sensitive info in there too, so it's a bit awkward. 
Wait. Bloodstain reaction. I quickly find the full sentence. Small bloodstain found on the lining of the skirt. Her leg must have been skinned when she fell. When she fell, must be talking about when not, not to be clapped for calling me. Oh, we can use the... We're gonna look at the past. If I use blood material in that blood, I might be able to figure out what happened to her. I search the paper bag and take out her skirt. I turn it over and sure enough, there's a dark stain. Oh god, there's gonna be a twist. Oh god. I put my fingers on the small blood stain and focus. Akira, are you there? This must be from her viewpoint. She knocks my door, but apparently I'm not there. I'm so sorry, Akira. She takes out the copy of the key I gave her, opens the door and walks inside. The mirror, the mirror. If Maroku's book is right, Ami's inside the mirror. If I join mirrors, I'm sure Ami will. Huh? It's Akira. Hello, I just got to your... Anatsumi, listen to me. I found a black poster on your desk. Where'd you find it? It was on the ground in front of the bar. I thought someone dropped it, so I picked it up just in case. Anyway, I need to tell you, Akira. I figured it out, I know. Now what? You don't mean the realm of the dead? Yes, exactly. It's a Moroku's Nagoshi no Ji, the realm of the dead. If what it says is true, Ami, Ami is inside the mirror. Mirror. I'm going to go save Ami. So hurry and join. Is this feeling? It's so hard to breathe. Shine. As her consciousness fades, I can hear the sound of the bathroom door opening behind her. Is someone? Behind me. Her consciousness dims as she turns around. I knew it! On me. Ah, crap. I can't collect my thoughts. What's going on? Ami? Attacked on Natsumi. Aw, oh, crap! A Ami! Ami isn't here. Where is she? Ami! Where'd you go? Ami isn't here either. I thought Ami was trapped in the bathroom mirror, in the room of the dead. That day after not Natsumi collapsed, that night I helped Ami out of the mirror. So then, why? Why was Ami outside it? Before I saved her! Oh god. Um, Ami. Don't you call me Oni-chan. You saw, didn't you? I guess I've been found out. What's that mean? My throat is dry. My voice is hoarse and hardly manages to work. Oh well. I had no choice, you know. Mom was getting in the way. What are you saying? I mean, it's true. If Mom hadn't come here, then I could have stayed here in your apartment forever. I wanted to be... Alone with you. Just you and me. 
alone and together. With you. Forever and ever. Sweat drips down my back. I can't move. My whole body's frozen. If those mouths keep talking and start doing that tail stuff of like, it's time for a tale of the Oni Chan, stuck with Rizumoto forever, and it's hard to breathe. Oni Chan, together, forever. Come with me. Oh, well. <laughs> Was there ever an army? I'm so confused. Did she ever exist? Was it all a trap? Is she just possessed? A cold breeze brushes my cheek. I stagger back to my feet. Oh, crap. Where am I? This place doesn't feel real. It seems vaguely familiar, but at the same time it doesn't. What am I doing here? My head pounds when I try to remember. All my thoughts are fuzzy. It's almost like I'm dreaming. None of this feels real. No! No, they are gonna do it! A whisper comes from somewhere. It's time for a tale. No! Once upon a time, there was a child named Kaguya who lived in the realm of the dead. Kaguya had a daddy. Kaguya loved her daddy so very much. Kaguya's friends were the tiny dolls her daddy gave her. Her previous daddy and the one before that they all gave her tiny dolls. Those tiny dolls were Kaguya's best friends. What the hell's going on? What should I do? Remember, maybe. My head fromps, my thoughts are a mess. No, that's not right. What should I do? Find an exit. Look for Kaguya? That's right, I. I have to look for her. For Kakia. As if guided by an unknown force, I walk and walk and walk down the dim, never ending path. God, it's literally a bizarre world. Next thing I know, I'm in some sort of room. It feels familiar here, too. I can hear a shower running behind the frosted glass door. Over the sound of water flowing, someone's singing. I should know that voice, but I can't remember who it is. Is someone there? Hey, answer me. Answer. My head fromps, my fonts are a mess. No, that's not. What I really should do is... Hey, answer me. D don't, don't answer. That's right, big brother. You shouldn't talk to that girl. That hussy girl flirts with all kinds of guys. She'll contaminate you. Kakyo's much prettier. Big bro, Onichan. Who's more important to you? Kakyo or that... Hussy girl. I'll be going have to reply, but I can't remember her name. I have to resist cocky or she'll devour my heart. Avoid! Emoto! Or die! Kaki. Hazuki. Hazuki. The Hazuki girl. 
It's better than Kakia. Big bro, you've been seduced by that evil pig, haven't you? Okay then. All Kakis do is erase her from inside you. The turtles! I know her. That'll help me, Kiyoru Hazuki. I've been here. What in the world is going on? Kaki must be behind this. But what's she after? Countless mouth surface began crudely laughing. It's almost the finale of the tale. It wasn't long until Kaguya had a new daddy. Like any of the old daddies, the new one gave her a little girl doll. One doll followed by another and another still. And when Kaguya received her fourth doll, she was surprised. This time, the doll was a grown-up. Kaguya played with this grown-up doll. Grown-ups themselves became interesting. Kaguya wanted to play with her daddy who she loved. Her daddy said no, but Kaguya played with her daddy regardless. Then soon after, her daddy disappeared. <laughs> what? A voice! I can kind of tell it's talking about Kaguya, but other than that I have no idea what's saying. My head feels like a big empty void. As if guided by an unknown force. I walk and walk and walk down the dim, never-ending path. Before I realize I'm staying at a railroad crossing, I feel like I know this place, too. Who's this? Hey, what's wrong? You can hear me, right? It's rude not to reply when someone's talking to you. Reply. Get out of my head! My head throbs, my thoughts are a mess. No, that's not it. What I really should do is... It's rude not to reply when someone's talking to you. I hang up the phone. That's right, Akira. You should even talk to someone like him. If Yakuza Punk takes advantage of you, you'll end up dishonest like he is. Kakia is nicer. Akira. Yakuza Punk or Kakia. Who's more important? Kaku. I'm a nome. Mame. I'm a nome. So you like that Yakuza punk more than Kakia? Kakia, sure. A hooligan blackmailed you. Okay then. All Kakia should do is erase him from inside you. A scream echoes from a short distance away. You have to see this again. I'm a no me. I know who this is. My best friend since elementary, Seiji Amanome. You need to go for everybody? Just like sand piling between my spilling between my fingers, my memories of Mama Nome slowly fade away. I can't even remember his face anymore. It's possible. I've lost other precious memories as well. <laughs> oh. Good evening. Did you make sure to forget everyone important to you? 
other than Kakia. In Ami's memories, it was just those two, right? Ami. Yeah, Kakia was Ami. Kaki wanted to be with you, so she was made to give up her body. But Ami isn't needed anymore. So, Kaki threw her outside. Outside? Then where am I? <laughs> Kakuryo. Kakuryo, the realm of the dead. It's a world inside the mirror. It must have been pulled in. I must have been pulled in her after Ami started acting strange. That's probably why my head feels so blank. Here in Kakuryo, it's just you and Kakya. Just the two of us. Together. Even after you die. Damn you. Are you planning to kill me? <laughs> oh no, it's much worse. She's gonna reenact her anime roleplay. Kakya. Loves you, dead or alive. So, let's play forever and ever. Hell no! No, let's say this one. She'll just make this ironic. <laughs> My head throbs. My thoughts are a mess. No, that's not it. So I really meant to say. Get me the hell out of here. Gee, I wonder why I should tell oh, right. <laughs> hey. The hell am I saying? It's like I'm a puppet dancing under control of Kakia. At this rate, she's gonna. Oh, yeah. Kakia. And a grown up doll. From Daddy. So, Kakia learned a lot about grown ups. Uh oh! They play secret games. Have fun without children. Uh-oh! It is going there. Sake. Cigars. And, you know. <laughs> Why does any of that matter? You see, Kakia loves you and wants to have fun with you the way grown-ups do. What the hell are you saying? That, that's... that's... W w w why? K k k k Kakia is also... Go going to be a grown-up. Ah. Uh -huh. Um, what? Uh... <laughs> Not the kind of transformation I like. What the fuck? A childlike Kakia doll. It transforms into a deformed monster. The only way to kind of describe it is bizarre. What looks like a furred arm and leg from a female are growing at odd angles out of a small torso. God, this became a monster girl quest. Let's get out of here right now. Monster that was cocky seems unused to its grown up body. Her steps as she stumbles closer are awkward, like she's just learning how to walk. I. I can still. We just pulled a Joseph Joestar. We're just gonna run. My feet are moving before I finish the thought. What's important thing right now is to get as much time as possible. Secret Joestar technique. Enough time to figure out a way to escape from her. The insanity flowing from her is menacing, with her crazy obsession toward me. If I'm caught, it will be the end for me. I just want the peaceful life. Back here again. Where's Kakia? My sense is on high alert. I search for any presence nearby. 
I don't think she's here yet. What do I do now? If this is the realm of the dead, then how do I escape from here? That's a world Ami have been trapped in. Because I faced the mirrors to each other from the outside, she was able to get out, but... No, it wasn't Ami I saved. And in Kakia. She switched places with Ami. I could only guess at why Kakia switched with her. Maybe her plan was to pretend to be Ami and live with me as my little sister. But me finding out ruined things, and she had to pull out the drastic measures. Kakia's obsessed with me. Wait a minute, she's acting as Ami. That means eventually she would have grown up and... Oh. If I think about it, this has been with since the start. She kidnapped Ami to get me involved in Kakia's game. She got really into continuing with me. She said that so she could play with me, who she loves. But why me? Maybe. I already have all the pieces to the puzzle. But my memory right now has holes all over. I've completely forgotten the names of the Yakuza Punk and Hussy Girl at this point. I like how it's the Hussy Girl. Can I really do something about her in the condition I'm in? The screams of the mouse pierce my brain. The tale has reached. Happily ever after. No, it hasn't! After her daddy was gone. Kakia became lonely. Kakia said to go outside the mirror and look for a new daddy. What? But, but, but. I can't tell what the whispering voice was saying there at the end. It was like the notes, it was in the reverse or mixed up. No point in sticking around here. She'll show up eventually. I need to make the first move and find a way to get out of the realm of the dead. As if guided by an unknown force, I walk and walk down the dim, never-ending path. I'm standing in a familiar room before I realize it. This is the place where the hussy girl was killed in the bathroom. Oh, I remember now. This is... my apartment. I wonder if the mirrored room and the weird colors are because this is the realm of the dead. There might be something here. Guess I'll take a quick look. Being in this place, I can't help but think about the scene of death I witnessed earlier. I'll look around the bathroom where she is later. I'll check other places first. Check the living room. Like in the kitchen, everything is mirrored here. This place is supposed to be familiar, but for some reason I only feel restless. I searched in the closet under the bed, but didn't find anything in particular. And the closet doesn't appear to be connected somewhere else either. Oh god, she's gonna break in and be like, time to do things on the bed. Alright, next I'll... Check the kitchen window, because that's very specific. The window is slightly ajar. Cold air leaks in through the crack. Put my hand on the window try to open it more. Doesn't budge in an inch. Alright. I haven't checked the window in the living room yet. It's a long shot, but maybe it's open. Alright, next doll. God, you're so weird. No! How did you- I've warned you about that bed, bro. I warned you about them beds. Piece of shit! I drive both fists in the cockiest torso, but she doesn't even flinch. My god, she's immune to my strongest weapon. My fists. It's like I'm hitting a boulder. Kakia wants to have lots of fun with you. If you don't love Kakia, then you won't be forgiven. I can't. My head's getting hazy. I can't think any. Oh God. Hey, tell me, who do you love the most? Oh, uh, 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 it's all the same. Ka, ku, ya. 
know me, Hasaki. Ka. Oh crap! Kakia. Yes. I love you too. I love you. I used to. Something breaks inside my heart. As my consciousness fades, a hard cold feeling engulfs my whole body. I hear Kaka's voice beside me. I'm playing with Kakia. Oh no, the squeaks are from the bed. Alone, forever, ever, never. God, it's automatically going through. Oh no, oh no. Game over. Well, that was... I get. I guess if you, yeah, that was a that was a bad end. Sometimes a winning move is not to play. A surviving move is just to play hard to get. In this situation, let's not be get at all. Quiet. I love you so much. Bullshit. As my thoughts fade, I remember all the people whose lives were destroyed because of this girl's game. Ami. Marahashi. I would have been nice to remember in a different way. Adnatsumi. Hey, Kakia, I really hate you. You're lying. You're lying, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying, lying, you're lying. <laughs> Kakia screeches and my sight goes completely white. My body is enveloped in a strange floating sensation. Brother! Big brother! Hey, wake up! This voice... I don't trust it. I'm never gonna trust in the Remoto ever again. Ah! Uh, this is never an angle of attack. I open my eyes to Ami staring at me worriedly. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. A little dizzy, but I'm alright. Oh, thank goodness. Her expression morphs into relief. I mean, it looks like Ami, I know, but... Are you... really Ami? I I'm the real Ami. I'm not Kakia. That's what Kakia would say. Ami, then... You remember when she possessed you? I remember. I was mostly awake, so... Did you remember not, not to me, too? Yeah. Kakia. She did terrible things to Mom, didn't she? Yeah. But... It was things to Mom that I was able to save you. What do you mean? Mom tried to join two mirrors face to face in order to save me. So I did the same thing. I see. The reason I escaped was because Ami joined the mirrors. That strange floating feeling after everything turned white must have been how I got out. Oh crap, she's gonna come after us now. What happened to Kakia? 
Smash that mirror! I grabbed the mirror that's looked into the realm of the dead and see. You're kidding me. No way. Oh, is she coming? The small sill in the mirror. It's Kakia. Okay, look. She's coming closer. God, it's like some giant Junjo Ito monster. Shite. Well, in that case... Yeah, that's right. Silver with our fists. Oh, crap. Majide! Come on, break, damn it! Some sort of strange power seems to be working on the mirror. What the hell? There's nothing I can do but win until she gets out. If Kaka escapes, then it's all over. She'll kill Ami, who's just a nuisance to her. And I'll be pulled back into the realm of the dead. What can I do? And G. Huh? And G is Kakyo's secret. If we can find out what it is, maybe we can get away from her somehow. She's right. She had been reading our books. When I brought NG to Kake before, she freaked out. If we have any chance, that'd be it. What is this NG that Kake hates so much? Think about everything that's happened. I must have heard about it recently. NG is. No good. That's no good. Nagashi no G. That's right. Nagashi no G. Yes, I'm extremely grateful to Noburo. It's entirely due to the Ishimaru's family or cooperation that I am to fulfill my duty. And then I should go G ritual or whatever, yeah? Sounds like a mouthful. When I shorten to NG? That sounds like a name a child would choose. Masaru, please refrain from saying anything that draws interest to the Kakia doll. The seal is in the process of weakening. She may be listening at this very moment. Could it be? We have to sacrifice our blood power, I'm telling you. To seal it. We have the power in our hands. Does Enji refer to the Nagashi no Ji? The Nagashi no Ji was a ritual for giving a doll plaything to Kakia, which sealed her in the mirror. People originally offered special dolls charged with spiritual power by the Moroku family. But an accident caused Yakumo Moroku to lose his spiritual powers, and he couldn't perform his role. See, the alternative method he chose was... Altering young girls into dolls instead. Oh crap. Shit. Well now I know the meaning of NG. That means there are two ways to seal Kakia. One is to pour spiritual power into a special doll and offer it to her. The other is to turn a girl into a doll and offer it to her. Both of them are absolutely insane and desperate. But which one gives us a chance? I'm assuming we don't send Ami. We're not gonna offer a hobby up. Special doll. I would hope, I would hope that'd be the right answer. But what do they mean by special doll? We have one, we have the little doll there. Thank. The name Moroku Owen, it could be a playmate for Kakia. It's near the Moroku residence. That connects to Kakia. Wait, ain't gonna be that, could it? Big brother. Ami, call me if Kakia comes out. You just stay here while I'm away from this mirror and she pulls us out. Here it is. I dig under my bed and it doesn't take me long to find out what I was searching for. I kinda noticed both Kakia and even Mary. Uh, Mary was more on the vor end of things, and suffering. She was more of a dom, if anything. Both of them have this weird, really weird, twisted sense of love for our protags. Mary was a little more flirtatious. She was like, had those little lines, you know, like, like, oh, I like being in your arms and stuff. But Kaki is a little more. She's a little too into me. I'm not really into that. A replica doll Kaki that we found in the attic, the Maroka residence. If anything's connected to her, it'd be this. Plus this doll. Hmm. Hey, what's this? That. Oh, since I'm the last successor of the Moroku family. It's just junk now. I suppose you being a wrinkly old man means you're not interested in getting it on anymore. Huh. 
It would look that way to you. Ever since I lost the power of my hands in an accident, I've given up on ordinary happiness. What do you mean by power of your hands? Each of my hands has a special power. The power to bestow was one of them. I would use it to bestow spiritual power into that doll and give it to her. If Moroku doesn't have kids or have a family, there's no one who can perform the ritual. Which would definitely make the doll junk. I'm telling you, he might be the descendant of Moroku. Because he doesn't know his dad. And he said like, oh, you don't have an interest in women. He's like, oh, yeah. Yakuma Moroku died because of Kaki, of course. Kaki considered him her daddy. But he was still killed in the end. That's why Kaki is seeking us out. Because we're descended. Think harder. Dig into my memories. There might be an answer buried in there. Kaki must have loved her daddy. So then why was Moroku killed? If I believe what Kaki has said, and the mouse words I heard back in the realm of the dead, it all started when he gave the fourth grown-up doll the tea doll. That changed her and she started getting interested in grown-ups. Moroku was probably killed with Kakia's game. The deranged love that makes her kill the one she likes so they die in a painful anguish. That must be Kakia's essence. Then after she was free, she killed Yuri Takamura. They came after me and Ami. Her interest in us is really strange. Why us? Only Chan, come over here. She's gotta come out of the mirror. Shit, she's here. Ah. She's trying to get out. See, this is like a death mark monster right here. With an insane screech, Kaki attempts to come out of the realm of the dead. We're out of time. Rating this nightmarish game tonight. And for that, I'll need to. Just do it all myself. I'm telling you, we're just sending. We can do with the power. She targeted everyone around us because she wants us to it herself. There's not a shred of evidence. But from the scared pieces of the puzzle, that full picture that's forming is leading me to a certain possibility. Ew. Yeah, right. His mom was really into Moroku's books. She was even more obsessed than Natsumi was. I never knew my dad's face. Mom was the only one of me since I was born. And she was such a huge fan of Yakimo Moroku that she barged into the Moroku residence. The power of blood in my right hand. The Moroku family had special powers so they could perform the ritual. Plus Kaki's abnormal obsession with me. Man, I called this like a while ago. If this is all caused by the blood flowing in me. Is it possible? Is Yakumo Moroku my father? No time to be shocked. The only way I'll survive is this if I believe in that possibility and to perform in G, and the Goshi no Chi with my hand. But the big question is, which hand do I use? The hand Moroku used in the ritual was the one of the power to bestow. Was it the right hand or the left hand? Right. Oh god. I wasn't paying attention to that part. Shot in the dark! Right hand it is. The hand of the power of blood tree. No, it's the wrong one. I didn't see good or bad. I got the tall of my right hand. Just like when I performed blood tree, I forced all my focus to my hand. Maybe the other one then, right? Hey, Kakia. You think you haven't played enough, do you? Why don't you play with this? The doll swelled into the mirror. <laughs> Crap, it was the other hand, I told you. That won't work. The right hand is dirty with blood. You can't even with a dirty hand. Well, we're boned. More ways than one. 
She grabs my shoulder and drags me into the mirror. It's the same bad end no matter what. Oh yes. Oh yes, it's the same bad end. I choose my left hand. The opposite hand, the one that has the blood metry power. I remember what Moroku said. See, I, I knew it was it was the one that doesn't have blood metry, but I just forgot which hand was the blood metry hand. Two hands hold the special power. The power of the style never power. My power has been passed down from generation to generation in my family. And maybe Moroku also had a power similar to blood metry. If that's the other power Moroku was talking about, then the other power of his right hand. And the power to bestow would be in the other hand, the left hand. I grip the doll with my left hand. I focus on my left hand just like I do when I'm doing blood metry. Hey, Gakia. You. you want to play so badly? Then play with this. Doll is absorbed into the mirror. <laughs> Why don't you take some time to reflect on your actions? Kaka disappears into the mirror. There's the clear sign. Like I said, whenever something good happens in life, that clear thing appears. Graduate clear. Win the lottery? Two clears. Is it over? Bromley. What happened to Kakia? She went back to her world. Inside the mirror. She'll probably be quiet for a while now while she plays with that doll. I just performed the true Nagashi no Ji. A ritual different from the emergency methods Moroku stopped, stooped by turning girls into dolls. I'm sure it'll be fine. Until she comes out again. Just like Mary. Mary's like not really gone either. Man, we just can't get rid of these dolls. Is mom gonna get better now? Yeah. I'm sure she will. And Hazaki too. The people who died because of Kakia's game won't ever come back. But at the very least, the ones who are alive have been saved. So I will say at a time, if you're curious, I will get all endings. So, I'm assuming we're getting the best ending right now. We are living our lives. Finally free. Alright, next. So where could you not? So then also calls for war, and you know why? Death march is over. You may go home in a while, right? Your wife must be worried sick. I doubt she even knows me gone. It's right our kids are doing homework last I heard they left at the last minute. Oh, that's right. Summer vacation ends today, doesn't it? Like poetry. It ends how it began. I pass a couple sailormen talking about their lives. On stifling nights like this, I'd rather take walks and stay plopped in from an AC at home. It's my current activity, wandering Kosoji at night. Being able to waste time doing nothing makes me realize my daily life is back to how it used to be. It's been weeks since Kake was sealed. Since then, all abnormal phenomena around me has stopped altogether. I haven't sensed their presence once, and the whispers have been silent. People around me have slowly begun getting back to their normal lives, too. I'd not seen me regain consciousness immediately after Kake was sealed. She took a few days off, just in case, but she's back working at the bar already. She told me she started writing another horror novel. I asked her if she knew anything about Maroke and my mom, but she didn't know anything else. 
Because my mom didn't share details about my dad with anyone. Not even Moroku. She might have noticed the Moroku family's dark secret after the relationship deepened. They should keep my time and Moroku's secret from me so I wouldn't get caught up in it. I mean, that was a bad idea. Because if he knew he had a descendant, then he wouldn't have like started killing off all these random girls. I'm like, oh, I have, uh, I have descendant. Alright, well, we'll just have him seal the doll. Amelie's back to her regular lively self. She's even started helping her mom. I still watch over whenever Aunt Natsumi is busy. Asuki's woken up as well. Just the other day, Amanomi and I sat through her occult furies for hours at the hospital. She's clearly not had her fill of spirits yet. Last I heard of Bon, he was pursuing a new case. His target says Princess Mox, an urban legend about a fast driving spirit. Hey, we read about that one. Rose's been traveling overseas doing her magician gig. The king of some countries is apparently a big fan, and paid her an exorbitant amount of visit. And all these incidents have sparked an interest in a mysterious case in an oi. The fuck she gonna become a pale normal cop? She's been trying to convince her to fire up to create a new department just to solve them. But it sounds like it's a hard been a hard sell. Listen, we gotta start a pale normal cop division. We gotta train pale normal cops. And Amanomi is. It's almost time. We're meeting at my place tonight. He used to talk such shit about my apartment. So what is he up to now? At least too excited to remember now that he's been freed from his house arrest. He'll be here any minute now. Well, I'm home resting. I'm a nomi stops by. Well, this place is as small as I remembered it. How do you live here? I wouldn't last three days in this hole. And you come all the way here to batch about my apartment in my face. Nah, no, I'm not that bored. Anyway, did you finish your homework yet? Yeah, yeah boy. You're pretending everything's under control, but it's not done at all, is it? I don't mind if you copy mine if you want. Because I'm such a kind young man. I was bored out of my mind while I was trapped inside. I finished it all ages ago. I don't really care. I'm using nasty looks from teachers. I bet. Watching you desperately copy my homework isn't what I want to do on the last day of vacation. Oh, I just remembered. Was it the mirror in your bathroom where Kakia showed herself? Before I can raise a hand to stop him, I'm gonna know me curiously peeks into the mirror. Hmm. So she came out of this thing, huh? Yikitu's gazing into the mirror. What is it? I was just appalled at how dirty this mirror is. Get off your lazy ass and clean it sometimes. I can't know the bitching about my place. We pass the time doing what we enjoy. I'm a nobody digs into a new snobby novel while I read the latest martial arts magazine. Every once in a while, we break the quiet by talking about random stuff. We do this every time we hang out at my place. You can play the upbeat music now. That reminds me. I need to return it to you. Uh, you're gonna have to give me a hint. Huh. Gun? Ha. Huh. You kidding me? You don't remember. Thank you for this crap in my closet. I pulled Amanome's modified gun from the back where I hid it. This is really dangerous, you know. Oh, right. I remember now. I've been so busy that it totally slipped my mind. What did you say? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So I had you hold on to the dangerous stuff for me. If you mean that? Don't ever ask me again. I made it here weirded me out. Don't blame you. There's only a few people I trust with this. You, my longtime friend, and Maruhashi, if only because you were subpoenaed to fault. When Hamanomi mentions Maruhashi, I can hear his voice turn somber. He must be suffering in his own way. He comes across as an intellectual punk, 
but he truly does care under the bluster. I've been meaning to ask. Now that you've won the war and successfully saved little army, what are your plans? What do you mean? I mean, are you going back to be an ordinary high school student? Studying peacefully at school, surrounded by your classmates? Is that the normal life you craved? <sighs> That's what I thought. That's the type of life ordinary people want, but I don't think it's for you. You need a life that allows you to utilize your skills. So you're saying... I should go back to doing the UG match. Exactly. I've realized you shine brightest when your life is on the line. Everything you've been, we've been through only proves it. So what do you say, Akira? You and me injecting some frill into the UG match again. I bet I do. Okay. Glad to hear you're down. This is gonna be so much fun. His face twisted into his usual scheming smirk. He would then go on to be known as the Legendary Dragon. But once again, that's a story for another time. So we're going to look at the Hazuki variation of this ending. And we're going to see if it's any much different. Amanomi's woken up as well. When Hazuki and I visited him at the hospital, he told us he was done with the occult crap. The day he was discharged, I returned the gun I'd been holding onto for him. And Hazuki is. It's almost time. Rubini at my place tonight. She says she's gotten her hands on some limited concert merch that Ami wanted. So she's excited to sneak out of her place to deliver them to her in person. I better get going. Gotta go pick up Ami. I pick up Ami at the Black Rabbit and we take our usual route back to my apartment. While we're relaxing. Hatsuki stops by. How are you feeling, Ami? You handling the heat okay? No summer cold, I hope. I'm fine. What about you, Keiru? I see a lot on TV. You must really be busy. 
<laughs> I slacked off for a while there. I need to make up for it. Oh, I almost forgot. Here you go. This is for you, Ami. Hazuki hands her a pink, round ghost plushie. Oh! It's Momo! It's a rare Momochi, made only for the concert. I never said you wanted one. They dug up a couple for me from the agency's warehouse. I hope you like it. Wow, I love it. Thank you so much, Kiyoru. Ami beams, her smell taking up her whole face. Feels like it's been forever since I last saw her smile so innocently like that. Oh, damn. What's wrong? I probably should have grabbed one for you, huh, Kijima? You'd like one of your own, right? Wow, I still have choices. Yes, I thought you would. A momochi in the home will bring good business, family well-being, and excellent health, you know. Sounds like a scam. I'm so glad to see you doing well, Ami. At any rate, Kake was so horrible disguising herself as you. You said it. She completely fooled me. Doubt she'll show our face ever again, though. You know what the kind of, like, nice detail that kind of hints? It's not only a hint initially, but... Because remember when the, the Tsukiyomi thing kicks in? And he's like, wow, I, the curse is kicking in. I haven't really seen Kake at all. Well, because Kake was there telling him the story, so she technically initiated the game as Ami. I thought that was like a nice little, like, oh, okay. I realize that now. She's still in that mirror in your bathroom, right? It's okay to keep it there. Wouldn't it be better if a shrine watched over it for you? I did ask not Natsumi to set something up. Oh god, she's still in the bathroom? I just realized that. It's like a, you, go, you go to sell your apartment room. It's like, yeah, you know, it's great. You know, everything's really clean and everything. And there's a um, ancient demon sealed in the uh, mirror. She's gonna break out about every 20 years, so good for you. Make sure you resell before then. Property rates are still high. I'm keeping an eye on until it's ready. If you're being cautious, then there's nothing to worry about. Huh? The text has appeared. Before I can raise a hand to stop her, Hasaki curiously peeks into the mirror. So this is where Hakakia got out. She continues gazing into the mirror. What is it? I just thought it'd be great if I could keep this mirror for myself. Only half seriously. I don't think it'd be a good idea. I agree, you're right about that. Ami begs us to play cards after her. So we end up doing that for a while. Old maid, concentration. We play all the usual games and... Hazuki wins them all. She claims it's all thanks to her guardian angel. Ah, Man, am I sleepy. Night's fallen before I realized. Ami's tucked into a corner sound asleep. Must have tired herself out from all the talking. The plushie Hasuki gave her is tucked in her arms. She must really like it. Miss Natsumi's rather late, isn't she? She's got a deadline coming up from the narrative novel. With all the crazy stuff happening with Ami, she probably didn't get a lot done. Worst case, she's pulling an all-niner. When she's focused, she loses all track of time. Oh, then she might take a while. Eh? Uh... Since we've nothing to do, how about we attempt a table-turning seance? No. I've had enough of this occult and spiritual crap. I'm getting heartburn just thinking about it. More importantly, Hazuki. You still into that occult shite even after what you've been through? Mm. Of course. It's both Keiru, Hazuki, and Momo Kurose's purpose in life. Figured you'd be turned off by all that all the, by all that by now. Not a chance. Now I'm even more curious about ghosts in the occult. An alternate universe, you died horribly, just so you know. It's all because I've been able to see them with my own eyes. If spirits are real, then Bigfoot and the sushi Sushinoko is technically real, possibly, yes. Should be too, right? 
Dreams know no bounds. You're pretty tough. Well, obviously I was scared too. I nearly died several times and I can't forget what happened tomorrow. But you know what? I still like it because I like it. And that emotion is so much stronger than me than my fear of disgust. I don't understand her at all, but I'll admit that love of hers helped me through all this. That passion is what drove her to stick by me till the end. Hey, listen. I want to keep going after all kinds of mysteries, learn all their secrets. Secrets? With... you along with me, of course. Count me out. Are you really going to stop going after them? Maybe not. Damn right. I don't know. Yeah, I knew it. There's no one else better suited to be Momo Kurosaki's partner than you, huh? Your blemetry gift doesn't hurt either. She gazed into my eyes, a full smile blooming on her face. So, not as romantic as you'd think, but it's also a little bit realistic. You know, they're not gonna, like, fall in love just yet. There's, like, a little bit of attraction there. But she's a little too quirky to really act on it. There's just a little bit of that kind of drop there of, like, the mutual respect. Strangely enough, it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to determine which ending. I mean, both endings are canon in a weird way because he's obviously gonna do both. Like he's gonna go back to the games, hang out with Amanome, and he's gonna hang out with Hazuki. I like how this one had Ami kind of mixed in a little bit. It feels a little more fitting, and some of the dialogue about the spiritual is a little more fitting. But the actual kicker at the end for Amanome was a little bit better. So toss up. So we're gonna go for the character profiles. Specifically, not the main profiles themselves, but the unlockables, which you get for uh, completing the game and um, having their relationship maxed out. So here's our main character, 18 years old, April 4th. Uh, you can just kind of read these if you want. Martial arts and general's hobbies, likes tough opponents and chicken, dislikes sweet things, legend, five-time first place winner of martial arts championship. Abilities, Fighter level 72, Subclass, High Stool Student level 5, Physique is 16, Intelligence 5, oof, Dexterity 6, Spirit Energy is 13. So, Intelligence and Dexterity, eh. Physique and Spirit Energy, those he's got pretty high off the charts. Um, and this is kind of a throwback to Deathmark's like RPG stats. And if you want to know about those stats, that's because Deathmark originally was going to be an RPG, and the stats were going to be important. Uh, and Deathmark, I mean, Spirit Hunter 3, as they're called now, is going to bring back the stats in an important role. They are making that an RPG again. Or they're trying to design one yet. There's really no game there yet. It's all very consensual. The skill is Right Street Combo. His personal best is 8 punches per second. Equipment, Bloodstained Lever Gloves. So many opponents have blood on them that they smell a bit. Look at Amunome, 18 years old. Birthday, June 9th. Hobbies. Threatening. Wild merrymaking. Likes fruit and older women. Dislikes ghosts and the occults. Legend. Merging the color gangs. High school student level 40. In comparison, high school student level 5. Yaksa level 51. Subclass. Physique is 7. Intelligence is 14. Dexterity is 13. Spirit energy is like almost non-existent. Skill. Supplemental shooting. 50%. Sees through others to accurate hit their weakest points. Equipment, Crest of the Amanome family. You can just put fears into non-members. Check out Hazuki. 16 years old, so she's a couple years younger than our protag. October 31st, of course. Hami is researching ghosts, animal activities, likes gossip on supernatural phenomena, Ami. Dislikes dancing, sports in general. Obviously, that would be kind of weird, you're an idol and doesn't like dancing. I guess it's just a job. Legend, High Kick of Master M's Two Stone. High school student level 19. It's not as good as Amanome. Idol level 42. Physique is 10. Because she's an idol, actually, she would be pretty good in shape. Dexterity is 9. Intelligence is 8. 
Spirit energy is 12. Skill. Quick change into Momo Kurose. In Momo form, attack power versus men increases. Equipment. Gothic Lolita Black Outfit. Let me see here. Momo Kurose. Made a movie called After School Scare Rumors. She debuted as a singer. In the theme song, Wanna Rabbits became an unprecedented smash hit. Her selling points are said to be her mysterious occult beauty created by her doll like appearance and manner of speech, which is kind of a throwback to Mary, obviously. She often works closely with idol group Love and Hero, who she previously considered a competition. There's no stats on her because it's Hazuki's. Bio. Fabon, 8, 40 years old. Hobbies, gambling, conducts interviews, exposes scandals. Likes drinking after winning. Dislikes working hard. Legend. Payback a debt of 3 million and 7 minutes. Journalist level 55, subclass, gambler only level 3. Physique is 12, so he's actually pretty up there. He's pretty in shape. Intelligence 11, dexterity 10, spirit energy is 6. So aside from spirit energy, he's got pretty good stats. Skills. Do or die game. If he succeeds, he wins it all. But win rate is only 1%. Equipment. Crack cell phone. There's Rosé. And Rosé, I believe, comes from a light novel or something that's connected to a Spirit Hunter, like a bit of a prequel of this, I think. So she she is tied in with Yashiki's group. Age 20, so she says in red text. Hobby seeks mysteries, searches for gems. Likes gems and expensive alcohol. Dislikes bright places. Legend, getting out of a rocket shot to the moon. Class, Magician level 60, Subclass, Thief level 31. Physique is 6, Intelligence is 8. Dexterity is 14, Spirit Energy is 11. Skills, Lockpicking, Skill level not high enough for complex locks. Equipment, Black Rose Perfume. In a proximity, one may become enchanted. There's Ami. Right here. Age 10 years old, November 22nd. Hobbies, Cheering for Momokurase, Likes for Brothers Cooking, Dislikes Scary Things. Legend has talked to a dog with a human face. Elementary school student level 23, but subclass sister at level 75 off the charts. Physique 5, intelligence 9, dexterity 6 because she's a little kid. Spirit NG is actually 13 though, one of the higher ones. Skills, replicate Momo's dance. She might be better than Momo Kurose herself. Equipment, pink headphones. Ami cherishes her gift from her Yuri Takamura. We'll check out Natsumi. 33 years old. Hobbies reading and writing novels. Likes Ami's smile. Dislikes managing the bar. Legend won the Yasuko, Yasuoka Library Award for years in a row. Writer level 40. Owner level 6 because she's not that good of an owner. Intelligence 13. Physique. Spirit energy 8. Resistance against sleepiness plus 40%. During deadlines, she can go 3 days without sleep. Equipment. Highest quality wedding band, memento left by our late husband. Here's Maruhashi, who sadly did not stick around very long in the game. 22. Hobby skiing by, cheering by from Momokurase, likes curry and hamburg steak, dislikes going on a diet. Legend, first leader of Red Crest. Flug level 13, because he's actually a very bad flug. Motorcycle gang level 42. Intelligence is 5. Spirit Engine 9. Physique 10. He's got a little bit of spirit energy, actually. Skills, Red Crest. One call summons hundreds of gang members. Equipment, slightly dirty jersey sweats. He lives at the office as he's short on money. Here is Oi. 27 years old. Hobbies execute justice. Likes criminals. Okay. Dislikes rules. Accepted practice. Legend, graduated top student at the police academy. And yes, we're thinking of that police academy. Police officer level 31, subclass none. Physique is 13, one of the highest of the groups. Intelligence 8, dexterity 7, spare energy 9. Skills, pressuring using Kansai dialect. She hasn't gone home in many years. Equipment, one police identification notebook effective against criminals as well as civilians. So from here on out, this is all unique profiles that was not in the main game. And I think these are all lore. So they look like they're fairly important. Yakumo Moroku, a horror novel author who bases stories off of Japanese fairy tales. The way he shaped the world in each, plus the intrinsically detailed depictions of cruelty defined him the most, and drew a legend of passionate fans. 
He's most well known for his horror fairy tales collection, Dark Fairy Tales. He's the head of the distinguished Moroku family with close ties to Noboru Ishimaru, and the previous president of the Sumi group. Those who inherited the Moroku blood over their generations possessed spiritual powers in their hands. The left had the power to bestow, and with it they infused a spiritual item doll with power to maintain the seal on the Kaguya doll. The right hand's power varied to person to person. And Moroku had the ability to read people's fonts. After an accident 30 years ago, he lost the powers in his hands. He's kind of like Doctor Strange. And was therefore unable to perform a seal with spiritual items. Initially, he tried to father a child who had inherited his blood. However, due to his sp spermatogenic disorder, it was near impossible. Ah, okay, I see. I see. He still wanted to fulfill his duty as one of the Moroku bloods. So he found an unorthodox ritual for sealing, turning young girls into living dolls with spiritual powers. So he, he was... Completely doing it for the greater good, quotation marks. Well, like I said, he, he looks like he got kind of into it a little bit later, or he's just so into his work that he was just like, well, this is a living. Ten years later, a woman becomes his housekeeper, and they become very close. When she uncovered traces of rituals he'd done, she fled in fear, but not before being miraculously becoming pregnant with the child he wished for. Sadly, he never learned of it and continue to fulfill his duty by performing the ritual of living girls. So, let's see here. Half a year ago, he kidnapped and altered a girl named Tubasa Oi, who wanted to become a dancer and offered her to Kaguya. However, unlike the previous girls, Tubasa was an adult who'd reached puberty. After coming in contact with her, Kaguya started to take interest in adults and asking for him to be her playmate. When he refused, Kaguya killed him with Kaguya's game. Kaguya's game, rather. So he didn't know... So if he knew if he had a kid, he probably would have stopped. That's like a great irony or something. Satomi Kijima, deceased. Mother of Akira Kijima and older sister of Natsumi. Her weak constitution in her youth saw her reading and studying instead of physical activity. Her mother passed when she was in elementary school. Her father after she graduated college. Natsumi was taken in by relatives, but she was determined to live on her own, making working as a housekeeper around Shinzo Ward. One of the residences where she worked belonged to the Moroku family. Since she was an avid reader, she was a fan of Moroku's works and overjoyed at the coincidence. She worked digitally. After about a year, much longer than her arranged contract, she came across bloodstains in the attic. She asked Moroku about them, but he refused to answer her. Beginning to fear this eerie side of him, she never returned to the mansion again. Choosing to distance herself from the residence and its owner, she settled down outside the Shinza ward. Not much later, she learned she was pregnant with Moroku's child. As a thing at first, she chose to keep the child, but never mentions who the father was. She raised her son alone without contacting Natsumi for ten years, but due to her weak body, soon began to reach her limit. Quite a bit here, actually. Realizing she didn't have much longer to live, she finally contacted Natsumi after considering the future of her son. She left him with her sister without telling her any details about his father, Akira Kijima and his aunt took care of her while she was hospitalized until she passed away two years ago. The cause of death was determined to be the fatigue of the heart. So, Anakin Skywalker. Yuri Takamura, deceased. A friendly high schooler who lived next door to Natsumi. She had been aiming to become an idol, and that's how she became friends of Hazaki. Ever since she was little, she had strong spiritual powers and experienced many phenomena. The reason why Kaka sent a black postcard was likely due to the spiritual quality she had. Taizo Amanome, a fierce-faced Yakuza boss of the Amanome family and father of Seiji. He's an old-fashioned Yakuza and respected by those who work under him. Against those who oppose him, however, he doesn't hold back. To this day, people still talk about when he shot a rocket launcher during a raid when he was young. He loves his son dearly and finds a great joy in baking pies for his one and only son, Seiji. Hiro Aratama, famed desk editor of monthly old parts. He was one of the pioneers of the popular cult trend around today in Legends of Japanese or Space Aliens Fury. Dog-faced human and purple toilet can't be talked about without him being mentioned in some way. His current whereabouts are unknown, however, being before disappearing, he left a prophecy saying, On August 1999, I will appear next to the Born Black. So that was us. And now we have concept art. So here is our pro tag. Here is, looks like, prototype designs. And personally, I'm, I'm actually more partial to these designs right here like I like these more um, the bottom left one might be like kind of like halfway point of like edgy but also serious 
But I can see why they maybe didn't use this, because it makes him look too old for 18. He looks like he's maybe as almost his late 20s. So like I kind of see like where they fought like well he we gotta age him down a bit and bring him back down to this age because he looks like he looks more 18 here. I'm a nome. They show a little height comparison. He's prototype I'm a nome. He looks a little more fluggy, a little more um sleazy. And like I said, I can see why they would go with this design, because this looks more like a prim and proper elite. Like he is going to the prestigious schools and everything. Like he's got nice shoes, he's got he's got his uniform all nice and proper. Well here, like I said, he looks a little too much like a fuck. And looks like he originally had the choker. Which is interesting. And it looks like they gave him the choker instead. Because you don't see it here. So I guess he took aspects of Amanome prototype and put it into our pro tag. Around here. Here's Hazuki. There's hot casual Hazuki just hanging out. I guess when she's not in her outfit. I guess this is both prototype but also technically casual Hazuki right here. There's a height comparison. I'm gonna say she looks cuter without the hat. <laughs> That's kind of blasphemous coming from someone who likes Toho, but I think like she looks cuter over here. Except for that camera, it looks like the design's pretty much the same. Momokurase. Here's her in casual outfits. And Bond. High comparison, Bond's a little bit taller. Prototype Bon. It's not too much. It looks. I guess he was like a little too rugged. For the most part, he doesn't look like he changed very much. No, I actually I see the little descriptions there. I'm wondering if that's um age. Because 30, 40, 50. Because he's 40 right now. Here's Rosé. Protep Rosé look pretty nice, the longer hair. Okay, it works on her. High comparison, so our Protep is taller than her. So here, here's actual Protep Rosé. That was just Rosé with long hair. Here's Protep one. It's, it's interesting. I could see why they, they changed it. Because she looks a little more eccentric here. She looks like tr like a black-haired Trish from Devil May Cry right here. I, I do prefer the, the more sultry, like, Fujiko characterization going on here instead. And it fits more in line with the... the scum... the kind of scum underhanded, uh, protag list. Here's Ami. Ami is literally Ami. There's the height. I don't really seem to say much. It looks like they had her design like from the start. There's Atnatsumi. Prototype designs. Prototype Maruhashi. I'm not sure if these are prototype. They also can be sometimes just facial sketches for emotions. Here's Oi. And I can see like they did especially model her after uh Mashita over here. Number three is kind of... It's kind of a cute cut. Number one, too. I like number one and number three. It's almost time. Okay, so this is gonna be the normal ending. This is the Amanomi variation, specifically. I don't think they're gonna be too much different from Hazuki's. We'll see. Be at my place tonight. He used to talk shit... Talk shit about my apartment. So what is he up to now? Maybe he's too excited to remember now that he's been freed from his house arrest. He'll be here any minute now. A cold breeze suddenly blows out in the alley in front of me. I reflexively close my eyes. Is that... a red umbrella? 
A red Japanese umbrella lays on the ground behind me. Exactly like the one Kakuya carried with her. Can't be. I resolutely ignore the umbrella and leave the alley. It's a coincidence. That's all. It was just a blown away from some event by the wind. Yes, yeah, some event. Convincing myself is my only option. While at home resting. So we're gonna skip a little bit ahead. Go do dialogue differences. Awesome. So I think this is where this differentiates, right here at the mirror. Because that's kind of how this game always works. It's like this little spot. Before I can raise a hand to stop him, Amanomi curiously peeks into the mirror. Hmm. So she came out of this thing, huh? He continues gazing into the mirror. What is it? It's nothing. Uh, there's something wrong. You're looking kind of pale. Your AC is crap. I'm just feeling a little sick from the heat. Again with the bitching about my place. We pass the time doing what we enjoy. I would normally dig us into a new snobby novel while I read the latest material arts magazine. Martial arts, rather. <laughs> every once in a while, we break the quiet by talking about random stuff. We do this every time we hang out at my place. It's gonna go down. She's still gonna be alive. It's kind of dark. Before I realize, the light in the room has vanished. What just happened? I don't remember. Did I somehow fall asleep? Uh oh. I'm a no way. He's nowhere to be found. Where is he? Nope, not here. Not here either. Aw, oh, crap. A strange world spreads out in front of me inside the mirror. Is it leading to the realm of the dead? This can't be. Hey, come on over, Akira. Normal ending? It's more like a bad ending. Why are you here? What the fuck is this? No need to panic, best friend. I'm a nome? Yo. I'm a nome. Why are you here? Did she possess I'm a nome? Do I really need to say it? To be together with you. Just you and me. Just you and me. That's what she said used to say all the time. Plus, I'm a nomad in the realm of the dead. Does this mean... Are you... Kakia? Huh. How did you come up with such a great guess when you never bother to study? It would be more accurate to, though, to say I've been possessed by Kakia. <laughs> I have to say, this is quite refreshing. But why? Then Ganashi no G was successful. Turns out your NG was incomplete. Your left hand that conducted the ritual was tainted. By the crutches of the spirits that were left behind as well as the victim's deaths. I don't understand. You don't have to. It's no longer important at this point. Just forget all that. It's just annoying anyway. It's only you and me in here. All you have to think about is me. Pull yourself together, Amanome. Is this really you? How you really feel? Yeah, it is. Akira Kijima, I've been jealous of you all this time. Supernatural strength, spot on hunches, calm rationalizations, unfaced courage, and danger. You have a lot of power I don't have. You're way more cut off for the Yakuza than I am. I've been jealous of you for that ever since I was a kid. You're not making sense. But you know what? None of that matters anymore. It's just you and me in here. No stupid societal rules or mafia or anything like that exists. 
Besides, the boundary between us will disappear soon. What do you mean, boundary? Disappear? What's going on? I decided. I'm going to eat you, buddy. Um. Oh, 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 we. The horrible sound of flesh ripping apart. I'm mean, going transforms into a deformed creature. This looks nothing like when Kakia took over Ami. It looks like a furious demon is in front of me. <laughs> what an incredible feeling. Finally, the dream of that forever could come true. This is some kind of weird, vor shipper fanfic right now. A harsh word from what used to be Amanome shakes air in this narrow space. Anchored through your despair, my heart drowns in them. I swallow down all of them, clenching my fist tightly. You son of a bitch! I'll beat some sense back into you! Before I can even move, both Amanome's hands press down heavily on my shoulders. I scream and do everything I can to escape his grasp, but... His strength is insane. Superhuman. I can't put an inch. Damn it! Give up already, Akira. This is game over. Get it? <laughs> I see you took some lessons from Mary. So this is the bad ending we're doing here now. And this is if you specifically get the two kind of protag characters killed, which would be Amanome and Hazuki. You get to have them both dead. Bon and Rose don't matter. Technically in this, I think mean, there's some variations based if they're alive or dead. In this one, I'm doing all of them are dead. So, everyone's dead except Oi, who is a mandatory character. Ugh. My head's pounding. I can't say I've been in the best shape lately. Not just headaches. My whole body feels heavy. And I find myself constantly on edge. It's because of all that crap that happened. My mind and body are just tired. I think I'll cut this short and head home. A cold breeze suddenly blows out of the alley in front of me. I reflexively close my eyes. Is that... A red umbrella? A red Japanese umbrella lays on the ground behind me. Exactly like the one Kakia carried with her. It can't be. I resolutely ignore the umbrella and leave the alley. It's a coincidence, that's all. It was just blown away from some event by the wind. Convincing myself is my only option. A few days have passed since then. My health continues to deteriorate. I have no energy to go out, to do anything even. I've secluded myself in my apartment. I wonder if she's possessing us. Because she possesses the other characters in the normal ending. I've been sleeping like shit lately. My body doesn't want to accept any food. At most, I'm going to get water in me. I've not seen Ami think I'm just a little under the weather. Or so I've told them, but... Who knows how much longer they'll believe that. I can't... Take this anymore. I collapse onto my bed. I'm so sleep-deprived and exhausted. I should sleep well tonight. I close my eyes and my consciousness drifts away into darkness. <sighs> Unceasing visions popping to my head are so vivid. I find myself bolting out of bed. Each one makes me relive every drop of fear and despair I experienced when they first happened. I guess it's another sleepless night. It's been this way for a while. Kaki is long gone, but the madness that went on during those days has stayed with me. It's like I'm helplessly trapped in a small cage. All I can do is wait for my death. Even so, Kaki was a better opponent compared to this. I knew who I was dealing with then. I must say, you don't look well. A voice speaks about nowhere. I try to turn and face the voice. 
but my body refuses to move. It's as if all the nerves in my body are detached from my brain. It feels so strange. Who are you? It's not important. Akira Kijima, do you know why all your death visions are putting you through hell? It's because your blood metry ability is out of control. That same ability is reading your traumatic experience of your own blood and showing them. It causes a loop, and the visions keep repeating. What? You've experienced quite a number of strange phenomena. The more you experience, the more your blood metry ability has improved exponentially. The end result, your ability is going berserk. Akira Kijima, I would like to help you. Is that alright? Please help me! <laughs> Thank you for being so obedient. If this keeps up, you'll ever go crazy or end up dead. You're my favorite. I prefer, much prefer not to see you like that. What's your plan? I'm afraid I can't explain it in a manner you'd understand. I'm interpreting the performance of being outside human logic. Well, so let me put, it's a supernatural phenomena. There's things I want to say, they ask, but... It's as if my lips are sewn together. I can't open my mouth. It's almost as if I'm facing Kaki again. Shall we begin? I will now transform you into one who is not human. Sadly, the human body is too frail to endure the rampage of power. I know you'll hate this, but please bear with me. It's the only way you can survive. This will save you. Someone's fingers touch my right shoulder. They feel hard, cold, like ceramic. Uh-oh! Those fingers slowly slide down to my elbow, then from my elbow to my wrist. It's there that they stop. Akira Kijima, I wish for you to live on. My entire right arm feels suddenly feels like it's on fire at that same instant. All the feelings and regrets I've been drowning under are wet for my mind. And... I'm transformed. Mary? Or Fur Doll? <sighs> Something in the matter? Did you catch a cult? You m might want to rest at the day. Damn, I'm too late. Akira Kijima. I sympathize with your fate. She really did try to save you. Her intentions were pure. But the strength of your blood metry power must have been more than she anticipated. So, you survived. But your ability has completely consumed you. You've become a spirit, body and soul. As it's come to this, I can't leave you be. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like my voice has reached you. I wanted to meet you under different circumstances. Please forgive me, Akira Kijima. Ooh, that's an interesting ending. So Yashiki showed up. Uh, here's the question. Who was the one who helped try to save him. Is it the, the, the touch felt cold like ceramic. But Yashiki also mentioned that she did want to save you, it just didn't work out. He didn't have like a really negative, oh crap kind of attitude to it. I'm wondering, did Yashiki, did he, did he fix Mary somehow? And he's got her like, as like a Scooby-Doo pet or something? Um, so that, that one is obviously was sequel bait for 
Spirit Hunter NG, or Spirit Hunter 3, rather. And I know for a fact, like I said, from what I've seen in the previews, I, they're gonna have like some Japanese, not Kickstarter, but some equivalent of that, to try to fund it. It's gonna be Yashiki again as the playable main character. All the other characters will be back. I didn't see the characters from this and this, but I'm, I'm sure they'll be there. And like I said, it's it's gonna be a side-scrolling adventure game, kind of. It's gonna be about being a paranormal cop, kind of investigating stuff. And they're bringing the RPG stats back, they're making RPG battles, kind of like what the original concept was back for Deathmark, before they turned into visual novel. So, that's fairly exciting to me. Because I, I like this universe, I like the artistic direction, and I like the characters and everything. So, a more involved game on top of what they kind of have here would be... I mean, it's basically bananas. In a good way. So that's it for Spirit Hunter NG. There is some more variations on a couple of the endings or something like that, but um, as I've replayed this entire game for like four or five times now to uh, get certain variations and stuff, I'm, I really just still can't bring myself to do it again. But yeah, so I already kind of talked about like the sequel bait and the stuff like that and where the series is going to go. Uh, I guess it's really up to me to kind of compare this against Deathmark. And in that respect, I think this is... I'm going to say this is overall better. Not necessarily in every way. It's better in the sense... So the writing is better overall. The writing is a bit tighter. A little bit less fillery. It, initially, the first chapter, so it's very fillery. Um, it's definitely acting like you haven't played Deathmark to an extent. And maybe you have to be introduced in this series. That's either a plus or negative, depending if you played Deathmark or not. But aside from that, the pacing is overall tighter. It's They did improve some of the writing in the sense of the characters are more involved. They're a little bit less... So Deathmark, it was more like you took tropes. This is tropes too, but in that one you took like cliches. And you had the cliche of the week with the monster of the week, and then they were kind of gone. Because they could be killed off in that chapter. Spirit Hunter... And G, I appreciate that they involved the characters. They aren't completely ran off if they die. They actually do have um, differences in the story and stuff. They do a trick where they replace the character's dialogue with another character and do a variation on it. Like Oi, for example, if you go into the final chapter of just Oi, she will do everything that the other characters would do and talk in their place. But she'll have a little bit different edge to it because she's just not very supernatural inclined. So they do a pretty good job of keeping an illusion of the, the choices kind of mattering. I mean, they do technically matter. It does greatly affect your ending if people die. Um, and aside from that, if they're kept alive, you get quite a bit of, like, side stuff and a little more dialogue and everything. And, like, those little extra scenes and everything, and extra CGs. Plus, we also have proper death scenes. We have the actual death CGs and stuff. They put a lot of effort into those. Uh, extremely gory, for the most part. The... The first two are the worst ones, with Hazuki and Namunome. Then they're a little more... ...comparatively tamer. They're still fairly bad, as far as, like, the outcome, but they're, they're a little more tamer than the, the, those. Those are pretty freaky. But yeah, it is overall tighter and better written. Um, I miss I miss the main characters of, like, Mashita and Yashiki and everything, and Mary and stuff like that from Deathmark. Uh, it's hard to beat that kind of cast, but Amanome, for example, does a pretty decent job, even if he's kind of ran out uh, part way in. And for despite it being an overall younger cast and everything, which it can be a complete disaster, it actually worked. They, they made sure not to... They make sure they first they stuck off to like the 18 years old. They didn't go for like 16 or 15, like the really young anime character. They went to 18, so our characters are a bit mature. And it, it managed to work because they weren't really angsty. Like, our protag's angsty in, a, in an aggressive way, so it's a little bit of a contrast to Yosuke, who is more analytical. This protag just literally punches things for solutions, so he's a little more forward, and we're not annoyed at any point for playing him. We do want to see the story kind of finished. And the little angle they did where the entire cast is a little bit scummy, except for Hazuki, who's just kind of quirky. Like, they're Yakuza, and they're, they're not necessarily good people, and they, they don't do things kind of, they don't feel like doing things by the law or normally. That kind of reminds me of some Japanese horror movies, which had Yakuza versus zombies or other monsters. But, I like they did, they did go over a different angle. 
So they also kind of tied the monsters in more of the main arc, which is somehow, it's both a little bit of a good and a bad thing. It's mainly a good thing. So the, the main story is more focused. Uh, on the other hand, it, it I think it restricts them a little bit on the craziness towards the last set of monsters. And overall, Mary is probably better than Kakia. Although Mary was not really an antagonist, I guess as a major spoiler. She she wasn't really an antagonist to, towards the end. They were just like little hints here and there. Kakia is more of an actual antagonist, like an endgame goal, so it's a little it's a little bit different of a different of a writing goal. But the the build up the kind of final build up with Mary's reveal and everything in that final chapter was was Kino, as you would say. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, I really love that final chapter with the Mary reveal and the way she, they use the squeak noise and like the lighting of the CGs and everything when she appears and she got the big fashy teeth. Kakia is inherently less shocking menacing to me until that final... The final chapter though was pretty good when you actually took on Kakia and her like transformation. Her transformation was um, horrifyingly beautiful in a way. It, it's... Like I said, it, it's the most death marky looking monster, uh, and it's a, the artist's particular style. They do a kind of artsy, artsy horrific, where it's kind of pretty, but it's kind of horrific, and that's really unique, uh, artistically. One, and I am kind of getting redundant in words here, but it's very unique. Uh, so I, I like the finale overall. As far as the entire monster list. Deathmark maybe was a little bit better. But this one had the Moroku, the Screaming Offer chapter. And that was such a slow burn, kind of interesting horror chapter that it, it kind of makes up for it. So, a little trade-off here and there. They're about equal in the end, as I had to kind of weigh it. But like, yeah, once again, I think Spirit Energy is better. Deathmark wins out in very particular spots. And Spirit Hunter 3, whenever it would come out, if they execute the way they want to, it could be really amazing. Because if you take the kind of grounded but enjoyable writing, the great art and monster design of the, the artists they use, I, I forgot their name now, but they're they're very unique and they're very well talented, very talented. And then you have the offbeat kind of cast they like to kind of make. You get yourself a fairly solid, you know, supernatural paranormal cop adventure. But yeah. Oh yeah, w one final thing. So we we have we had two idols in this series now, uh, and two, I guess you would call, Deathmark didn't have any true heroines or anything. They had like the, this one girl who was in the paranormal, the the camera, and he had some of the other characters. This one we have Hazaki. I'm gonna say Hazaki is definitely leagues better than the um, the other temporary heroines from Deathmark. She's a bit chuny. So that, that's a little bit annoying, but it works It works in the context of a, a, a horror story because it adds that little bit of schlockness you might need. It adds that, it adds that little bit of Scooby-Doo. Because you need that little swiddle that she's kind of like that little Velma, that little bit of Scooby-Doo there. And like, yeah, she's an anime-ish, chuny kind of thing, I don't know, whatever, yeah. But at least she's they give her that angle where she's really into the paranormal and she knows her stuff and everything. And she's not going around being stupid or anything like that. She's got like a level head, so it works. It makes it fishes off the Scooby Doo gang, because then you have the contrast of Amanome, who's scum, and then our protag, who's just extremely stoic, and then Mitchell getting married to be the actual Scooby Doo or the Scrappy Doo, depending on your perspective. And we'll be set. But yeah. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play Spirit Hunter NG. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.